Ever felt like a dark cloud is following you around? Like you're trapped in a pit of despair and no matter what you do, you can't climb out? Maybe you've even heard a voice whispering those awful lies. You're not good enough. God has abandoned you. Well, I'm here to tell you that voice is a liar. It's not God. It's the enemy of your soul trying to steal your joy. And he's been using the same dirty trick on people for centuries. Today, we're exposing the number one lie Satan whispers when you're depressed. We're going to dig into the Bible, uncover the truth, and equip you to fight back against those lies. If you're tired of feeling trapped by depression, if you're ready to reclaim your joy and discover the hope God has for you, then you're in the right place. This video is for you. Imagine a farmer planting seeds. Some seeds fall on good soil, some on rocky ground, and some among thorns. The seeds are like our thoughts and beliefs. Satan tries to plant seeds of doubt and despair in our minds, hoping they'll take root and choke out our joy. But the Bible tells us we have the power to choose which seeds we water. We can choose to focus on God's truth and those seeds will grow into a harvest of hope and healing. Friends, let's delve deeper into this web of deception. Satan, the master of lies, doesn't just whisper a general sense of worthlessness. He tailors his attacks, aiming straight for your heart. Ever heard that nagging voice telling you, you're a failure? That's Satan twisting God's truth. Maybe you felt the sting of God is disappointed in you. That's another of his deceptions, designed to isolate you from the Heavenly Father who loves you unconditionally. Or perhaps you've wrestled with the thought no one cares about you. A lie aimed at cutting you off from the community that God has placed around you for support. And when he whispers, You'll never amount to anything. He's trying to extinguish the spark of potential that God himself placed within you. These are just a few examples of how Satan personalizes his lies, custom fitting them to your fears and vulnerabilities. He knows our weaknesses, our past mistakes, and the areas where we feel most insecure. Let's look at David, a man after God's own heart. Even he experienced deep guilt and shame after his sin with Bathsheba. The prophet Nathan confronted him saying, Thou art the man. 2 Samuel 12, 7. David was crushed, but he didn't let guilt define him. He repented, sought forgiveness, and found restoration in God's love. Or consider Elijah, a mighty prophet who, after a great victory, fell into deep despair when threatened by Jezebel. He fled to the wilderness, feeling alone and afraid, even wishing for death. But God met him there, providing food and rest, reminding Elijah of his presence and purpose. These biblical figures, and countless others, show us that even the most faithful can be tempted to believe Satan's lies. But they also demonstrate the power of turning to God, who offers forgiveness, renewal, and a hope that transcends our circumstances. So, how does Satan amplify these lies? He isolates us, making us feel alone and disconnected from God and others. He tempts us to compare ourselves to others, fostering feelings of inadequacy and envy. And he constantly reminds us of our past mistakes, whispering that we are beyond redemption. But we don't have to fall for his schemes. In the next part, we will explore the profound truth that counters these lies and sets us free. Friends, let's shatter those lies with the unshakable truth of God's word. I want you to hear this deep in your soul. You are not worthless. That's not just a motivational phrase. It's the resounding truth that echoes throughout Scripture. The God who spoke the universe into existence knit you together in your mother's womb. He knows every detail of your being, every hair on your head, every thought and emotion. As the psalmist declares, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Psalm 139, 14. You are not an accident. You are not a mistake. You are a masterpiece, created with divine purpose and intention. Your value isn't determined by your achievements, your failures, or the opinions of others. Your worth is inherent, bestowed upon you by the Creator Himself. In Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. This isn't just a promise for the future but a present reality. God has a plan for your life, a good plan, a plan to prosper you and not to harm you. 
He sees your potential, your gifts, and the unique contribution you can make to the world. And His love for you is unwavering, relentless, and all-encompassing. Romans 8, 38 and 39 proclaims, For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That means nothing. Not your struggles, not your mistakes, not even the whispers of the enemy can sever you from the love of God that flows freely through Christ. His love is a lifeline in the midst of the storm, a firm foundation when everything else seems to crumble. In Isaiah 43, 1, he calls you by name and declares, Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. You are not just a nameless face in the crowd. You are known, cherished, and deeply loved by the Creator of the universe. You are his precious child, chosen and set apart for his glory. So let's silence those lies that seek to steal your joy and rob you of your purpose. Let's stand firm on the solid foundation of God's word, which declares your worth, your value, and your belovedness. Now that we've established the unshakable truth of your worth, let's explore how to apply this truth in practical ways to combat the lies of the enemy. It's time to take practical steps to combat those lingering lies. Remember friends, faith without works is dead. It's not enough to just know the truth intellectually. We must apply it to our lives. First and foremost, pray. Pour out your heart to God. Ask Him for strength, for clarity, for the power to see yourself through His eyes. As it says in Philippians 4, 6, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Next, immerse yourself in the Word of God. Make those powerful scriptures we've discussed a part of your daily life. Read them, meditate on them, write them down and let them seep into your heart and mind. As Jesus himself said, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Matthew 4, 4. Don't underestimate the power of community. Talk to someone you trust, a friend, a family member, a pastor, or a counselor. Sharing your struggles can lighten the burden and provide a fresh perspective. Remember, confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. James 5.16 Finally, resist those lies. When the negative thoughts come, don't let them take root. Counter them with the truth of God's word. As Paul instructs in 2 Corinthians 10.5, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. This is a daily battle, friends, but it's a battle we can win with God's help. He has equipped us with everything we need to overcome the lies of the enemy and walk in the fullness of his love and purpose. Now I want to hear from you. Have you ever wrestled with these lies? How has God's truth helped you fight back? Share your experiences in the comments below. Let's encourage and uplift one another on this journey. If you're looking for more Bible-based encouragement and guidance, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you found this video helpful, please share it with someone who needs to hear this message of hope. Let's close in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your unfailing love and truth. We lift up all those who are struggling with depression, asking that you would comfort them, heal them, and remind them of their infinite worth in your eyes. May they experience the fullness of your joy and peace, and may they walk confidently in the knowledge that they are your beloved children. In Jesus' name, amen.